All right, guys, back out here today with another gel test for you. I'm excited to get going on these again. I think it's been about a year since I posted one. Apologize for that. Uh, gel test is something that I do plan to keep somewhat regularly um, scheduled in the upcoming videos, but since I use this organic Knox, it's hard to use it in warmer weather. I do transport on uh, ice to keep it at the controlled temperature. You want the stuff 39 degrees for optimal results. Uh, it's 10% ballistics gelatin, Knox gelatin. Uh, but when I bring it out here, 75, 80 degrees or warmer, the stuff starts to melt real fast. And so, and it's sticky and nasty. And so really winter, early spring and late fall is like the best times for me to do these. And I've just been kind of slacking off this year. But anyways, got uh, another one up here for you today. So this is gonna be a 380 test. Uh, these are both Underwood. Uh, extreme defender bullets so they have the uh, weird looking tips there where those fluted channels when they hit it causes fluid disruption so it acts like a hollow point but without needing to achieve expansion to get those large permanent cavities like a hollow point does and also because they don't need to expand they're also barrier blind so a lot of hollow points will fail um, like you know four layers of denim test or after shooting through bone or wood or metal or glass or anything like that a lot of hollow points for, will fail to work as designed uh, but these don't have that issue so I'm not sure which order I have these sitting in here these are 68 grain uh, I do believe they offer these in 90 grain as well for the 380 but these are both 68 grain One one is plus P and one is standard pressure. I'll put some over the chronograph so we can get some velocity reads on that. So I'm testing both today. I want to see if there's much difference between um, the standard velocity of the um, standard pressure and the higher velocity of the plus P pressure. Some of my older tests, these seem to work really well, nine millimeter and larger caliber. Um, but I, from what I have seen in 380, not so much. So I'm hoping that plus P will make a difference. Um, so I'm gonna have nine millimeter, same thing coming up next. Um, I don't think I have, I think it, it will be um, 68 grain plus P and then I have some 90 grain uh, standard pressure. Yeah, but that's what will be coming up here soon for a nine millimeter. Uh, but these in the 380 test here today, they're both 68 grain projectiles. One is standard pressure, one is plus P pressure. All right, I went ahead and threw that block back on ice so it didn't get too warm. So the firearm I'm using today, uh, in future videos, guys, when I'm a bigger YouTube YouTuber and have more funds to, uh, you know, go in more in depth and such and expand my collection, I do intend to do uh, future gel tests with different length barrels. But this is the only 380 I own. However, I will say most people that are carrying a 380 are carrying some kind of micro like this so this is an uh, Ruger LCP max it has a 2.75 inch barrel again we'll run them over both over the chrono see what kind of velocities we get they will come in under advertised because of that short barrel uh, but right here you can see that's the standard pressure advertised 1300 feet per second there's the plus P pressure advertised 1400 feet per second and for those of you who would Feel inclined to mention it yes i know this is not plus p rated um, however i have ran several mags of plus p through it with no issues a buddy over on the channel freedom by me he runs a ton of plus p pressure through his and still hasn't had any issues so uh, running them through every once in a while shouldn't be an issue i would recommend you follow the manufacturer's recommendations don't take my word for it but it should be okay me personally running a few plus p through this every now and again so again, optimal temperature for this is 39 degrees. So obviously coming out of the refrigerator, it's just a few degrees colder than that. I think my fridge is set at like 37, 38. Uh, but I got these on ice in here in the cooler to keep them nice and cool. That bottom one's obviously gonna be a little cooler. I'm gonna put that one in the front and this one on top here in the back. Um, these have to be calibrated to verify uh, that they're 10%. Um, minimum penetration is 2.95 inches and maximum allowable is 3.74. I'm coming in there right at 3.74. Um, so that's a little bit thin. It's right on the very edge of what's allowable. Um, but you might get a little extra penetration if you're coming in 374 as compared to 295. I try to come somewhere in the middle, uh, but it doesn't always work out that way. So this one ideally being packed in this ice down here is going to be just a little colder than the optimal 39 degrees so i'm going to put that one up front which that one should be a little bit thicker because of the colder uh, temperature there so our bb would be closer to the mid uh, calibration there so i'm going to have that colder one up front there when we hit these 
All right, so enough of that crap. Let's get to it. I get uh, four layers of denim thrown on here real quick. Um, in my later gel test, I started doing a t-shirt test first and then four layers of denim because some people were complaining. Four layers of denim, who wears that? Again, if you live in the northern states like I do, this is thicker than four layers of denim. And that doesn't count if I'm wearing any layers under it, trying not to freeze to death. Now, today's a pretty warm day, so I don't have extra layers on. But just this jacket itself is probably as thick as four layers of denim. So anyways, since those are barrier blind, I'm skipping the t-shirt today. And I'm just going to do the four layers of denim uh, because it shouldn't affect it. All right, I just have you guys off the side here so you can see the impact. Uh, if I get a chrono read, I will read it off to you. So first up, we'll do the standard pressure and then we'll do the plus B. All right, that was a perfect shot, and we got 1025 on the read there, and again, that was the standard pressure. Take a look here real quick. That is a pretty nice permanent cavity there from a 380. These are 11 to 12 inches long, so we're sitting right there about 11 to 12 inches of penetration, and it flipped backwards. So that is probably, almost definitely, why we're seeing all that damage there, uh, because it tumbled immediately. Now, as I said, they make these in 90 grain as well, and these 68 grain ones are even shorter. They're real short, because it's just solid copper. There's no lead, uh, 68 grain. They're just a little dinky short in bullets, so I think that's going to help that uh, tumble, because it's so short. The longer ones, the 90 grain ones, may not tumble like that. There's your entry right there. Okay. And so now right next to it, we'll do the plus P. And uh, I don't see it yet. I thought it might have been a little low, but it looks like it's right next to the other one. Much higher velocity, 1257. So, okay, yeah, it wasn't low. It was actually higher than the first one. So, I well, about the same. It's just because this gene material shifted. So, there was the first one, the standard pressure. There was the second one, the plus P pressure. There's from up top. It does look a little larger permanent cavity there from the plus P, as it should be because it's going faster. There's from the side, and we did get extra penetration. And that one did not, or if it did tumble, it righted itself before it rested. So, not sure if this one tumbled or not because it's facing forward whereas this one is not um, but regardless we do have more damage from that it carries a little longer over here you can see it's pretty thin there whereas here we're still getting some tearing and we did get further penetration so let me get a measurement and weight on these real quick all right so right about well 12 and a quarter 12 and a half on the standard pressure and we got a little bounce back on the plus p it was about 15 and a half bounce back to about 15 even there i gotta say those are really impressive wound cavities from uh 380 yeah you can definitely see the plus p did more so that was what was it it was averaging mid 1000 feet per second and finally got a read on this one and it was 12 something you can see the extra damage it did there from the extra velocity imagine that out of a longer barrel 380 where you can actually get 1400 feet per second i mean this is on par with some really good nine millimeter hollow points i've seen so i'm going to be uh real excited to see what these do uh, in the nine millimeter test coming up next the nine millimeter test is going to be a little different because uh, i have the 68 grain plus p and nine millimeter um, and my nine has a longer barrel so not only with it uh, being a nine millimeter and a longer barrel it's going to be going a lot faster so it's actually the same bullet and the same caliber they're uh, both 380 and nine millimeter or 355 caliber i believe uh, it's just going to be going faster out of the nine millimeter so it's going to do more damage than that and then in the nine millimeter i have the 90 grain standard pressure i believe it's going to do a real good job of showing the difference in velocity because that 90 grain standard pressure out of a nine is going to be going much slower than the 68 grain plus p out of the nine so We'll have some interesting results in the next one for sure. 
Also worth noting, you're going to get more penetration with the heavier ones. So I believe those are like 18 to 20 inches on the 90 grains. Maybe not through 380, but through the 9 for sure. Um, so it's a little over penetration in my mind, which is why I wanted to switch to 68 and a 9 millimeter. Uh, but you can see here, even in 38 or 38, even with the 380, with the little 68 grainers, we're still meeting FBI minimum standards 12 inches there. And well into the middle of it with the, the plus P there, getting that extra penetration with the extra velocity. And again, that's through four layers of denim, guys. Uh, most hollow points, especially in that little micro 380 with that short barrel not getting that good of velocity, uh, most hollow points fail through denim. They just do not expand and they zip right out the back because they act like an FMJ, full metal jacket, round nose bullet, because they get no expansion whatsoever, whatsoever because that denim clogs them up and you get very poor performance and over penetration. And these, as you can see, no problem whatsoever, which like I said earlier, that's why I skipped the t-shirt thing. So there's your bullet there. I'm not gonna pull both of them out because obviously they're gonna look the same. So no deformation, you know, you could probably reload it and shoot it again. And I thought it was neat, these, so the 68s, I looked it up, these are actually made by Lehigh Defense, but these are Underwood loadings. Lehigh just makes the bullets. But I looked it up on Lehigh's website. The 90 grains are a little bit longer, and, because I was wondering how they get this so light, so this is a little shorter than the 90 grain, but they also hollowed out the rear end of it here. Whereas on the 90 grain, it's filled in, so 90 grains a little bit longer and filled in on the back. But that's going to do it, guys. I'm going to hurry up and wrap this one up so I can go ahead and get that 9mm test done before this gel gets too warm. Uh, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Stay tuned if you want to catch the 9mm one. But I appreciate you all stopping by. If you want to get yourself any of the products you see uh, in my videos, shooting bags, steel targets, paper targets, target stand, chronograph. Links are in the description for those and more. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Hope to see you on the 9mm version. Later.